Welcome to the GP Lamy YouTube channel where the much awaited and much anticipated generation three of the Hammerhead Karoo computer lands today. But it's not the Karoo 3. No, they're calling this one just the Karoo, which makes things awkward for a number of reasons. So from here on in, in this video, I'll be referring to this as the Karoo 3, the K3, or its codename, the K24. Okay, let's get straight into the details of what's new and the key features. Kicking off with a new design and form factor, there's a new shape, new buttons, new screen covering, it uses the same mounts, the SIM card slot is gone, and it weighs a little less than the Karoo 2. On the hardware side of things, some new updated internals with a 2GHz quad-core CPU, 64GB of storage, 4GB of RAM, and a new ambient light sensor. On the operating system side of things, we see an update to Android version 12. But with that comes with the same UI and UX as the Karoo 2. They're very much one and the same for that user interface and user experience. Hence why this video is looking at the key features, not an entire feature set review of this unit. There will be a lot to cover there. The Karoo 3 does come with a bigger battery with a 30% more battery life claimed. It finally comes with a companion app for Bluetooth data connectivity. So when you're away from Wi-Fi, you can do a lot more with the unit. And I'll dig into that a little later. On the positioning side of things, it now has multi-GNSS with multi-band on the L1 and L5 frequencies. What does that mean for the non-nerds? Well, a little bit better positioning when you're riding your bike in complex areas. I've done some testing of that. We'll see head to head. In a moment, there's some updates to the training pages side of things, better SRAM access integration, and there has been a price bump. A closer look at the hardware now, and the shape of the Karoo 3 is effectively the Karoo 2, but inverted. But the Karoo 3 is a little more squared off on the edges. It has a new button design on the sides that have more protrusion, and they are easier to press with gloves on. There is now a dedicated power button on the Karoo 3, right there next to the USB-C charge slash data port. And do note, there is no SIM card slot on the Karoo 3. Some side-by-side -side upgrade comparisons here with the Karoo 2 and the Karoo 3. The Karoo 3 coming with 64 gigabytes of storage, up from 32 on the Karoo 2. The Karoo 3 having 4 gig of RAM, up from 2 gig on the Karoo 2. And the quad core 2 gigahertz CPU is up from the quad core 1.1 gigahertz CPU on the Karoo 2. On the battery side of things, SRAM slash Hammerhead, which I'll now call SRAMahead, are claiming up to 15 hours of typical usage, which they state is around a 30% increase on the Karoo 2. The battery on the Karoo 3 does report to be a 3300 milliamp hour battery, up from a 2500 milliamp hour battery on the Karoo 2. Running some fact checking here on that 30% battery claim on a recent ride that was around 90 minutes, I was getting 8.5% battery drain per hour on the Karoo 3 and an 11.22% battery burn rate per hour on the Karoo 2. Now these conditions weren't real world, I did have some screen recording operating at the same time. But doing some quick back of the neck and math on that, the Karoo 3 would have lasted 11.65 hours, the Karoo 2 would have lasted 8.91 hours. Adding another 30% battery life to the Karoo 2 gives us 11.58 hours. Those two are pretty close. A method used to conserve battery on mobile phones and now bike computers is to auto adjust the screen brightness based on the ambient light. How do they do that? Well, with an ambient light sensor, which is now included on the Karoo 3. The ambient light sensor on the Karoo 3 is positioned right there on the top of the unit. Digging deeper into the hardware on the Karoo 3, and it's welcome news for those who have had trouble with the Karoo 2 and its uh, elevation recordings. I do believe there's an updated pressure sensor slash altimeter on the Karoo 3, which is reported as being from Bosch. And in my testing, it does track very well with the Garmin Edge 1040. Okay, a quick look at the elevation data recorded from two rides here, one with the Hammerhead Karoo 3 and the Garmin Edge 1040 Solar. Starting off here with the manual calibration of the altimeter at around 800 and 36 meters and tracking very very closely all the way through to around here where unfortunately I left the auto pause off on the Garmin so things changed a little bit here with an offset but then from there on everything tracked pretty nicely. Ride number two here with three units. Now I did stop and reset everything manually to 436 meters. Unfortunately the Hammerhead Karoo 3 didn't take that setting so it is a constant offset the whole way, but you can see here there's no major differences and everything looking very, very similar here. I probably would want to dive in and have a look at this little blip here that's happening on the Karoo 2. Can't really explain what's going on there with a the little blip. Nothing really much to worry about though, but nothing big. Now, where I've seen the biggest problems with the Karoo 2 is in the wet when the access ports or access holes possibly get filled up with water or covered over. You can see here side by side, the Karoo 2 there, there's access ports there at the top. On the Karoo 3, I believe that's the beeper there. 
and there's possibly breathe holes down below a little further. So hopefully not getting covered or filled up with water in wet conditions. So fingers crossed with that, and what I do believe is a new Bosch chip inside the unit will get better elevation data recording from this new Karoo. Onto the weight scales, and SRAM ahead have shaved some grams off the Karoo 3 unit. With a playing weight of 118 grams, holding up here, being spot on. And as reference, the Karoo 2 did come in at 133 grams. A close look at the screen and the size and pixel density are exactly the same. So 3.2 inch, 480 by 800 pixels. So the same screen size and resolution as the Karoo 2. The Karoo 3 does have new cover glass, which they're claiming has less washout and said to be better in direct overhead sunlight. One thing I found is the screen on the Karoo 3 is a lot brighter. So when setting both the Karoo 2 and the Karoo 3 to 40% brightness, the Karoo 3, as shown here on the stem, is a lot brighter in my, well, very dim conditions on the bike yesterday. Doing a close-up reflection test on the Karoo 3, you can see it's quite crisp as compared to the Karoo 2, which has a bit of a fuzz to it. So hopefully meaning it's a little easier to read in all conditions. When it comes to operation in the wet, let's be honest, nothing really works that well with touchscreens and water. And here in my, well, very artificial test of wet weather, which we haven't had a lot of here lately, both units were doing pretty much their own thing. Look, if you're riding with one of these in the rain, I'll be using the touchscreen lockout option and using the buttons to navigate around, or even better, using the new button integration with SRAM Access, which I'll talk about in just a few moments. In regard to boot time or startup time, it has been improved, but I wouldn't call it much faster, to be honest. A little more on the operating system, and the Karoo 3 does run Android 12 64-bit. That is quite the leap forward from Android 8.1 32-bit on the Karoo 2. However, that is all under the hood, though. The one-for-one -one user experience is very much the same between the two units for now. As mentioned in the intro summary, the GPS slash GNSS chipset has been updated now with multi-GNSS, multi-band, L1 and L5. Let's jump in and have a quick look at my testing on that now. Okay, two rides to look at here with GPS accuracy. First ride here is the Hammerhead Karoo 3 up against the Edge 1040 Solar. Ride out in the open here, let's not worry too much about that, that's pretty easy. The harder stuff is in the forested areas. We can see here, pretty much one for one. No real separation between these two. Nothing that I'm too concerned with through here. Up against the tree line there. I'm not going to worry too much about in town here. I had an auto pause issue through here. So let's skip through that one. Okay, further into the Creswick Forest and into a fast downhill section that's fully forested both sides. I can't see any major issues. No big wonkiness that we see with other units. No Mario karting much around corners at all. Look... It's almost impossible to split these two, even down here at this intersection. So very, very close, tracking very, very well within, look, a meter, a meter and a half of each other. So test ride number one with two units that are multi-GNSS and multi-band is looking good. Okay, ride number two, and I will put up the color codes there in the top left-hand corner. So Hammerhead Karoo 2 is in the light blue. Purple is the Hammerhead Karoo 3. And in red, orange, or whatever we want to call that, is the Garmin Edge 1040 Solar. And this ride was specifically to test the Karoo 2 versus the Karoo 3 and the Edge 1040 Solar. So two units having multi-GNSS, multi-band, and one being, well, the Karoo 2. First section of road through here, or trail, I guess you would call it, is off-road, the wallaby track. We can see the blue sort of surfing out a little bit there. A little bit through here. A little bit wonky under the bridge with the blue. And that's pretty much the theme all the way through. So there's always going to be a little bit of averaging every now and then. But the blue is always just trending a little bit wonkier than the other two. And that is the Karoo 2. So not really that surprising. All right, scrolling down, scrolling down here. Here's where I routed to the Black Hill Mountain Bike Park in town. Here is the full route and me riding, definitely what I would consider underbiking, the cross-country track here on my gravel bike. And you can see the blue is just a little offset to everything else. But those other two, being the Edge 1040 and the Karoo 3, being a lot better at tracking the real track that I was riding through the forested area there. Things get a bit wonky with everything, I guess, through here. Purple is off a bit. Look, they're only within a few meters and it does get ugly through here. But the trend for that ride is that the Karoo 2 really wasn't holding up as well as the other two. So in short, seeing the Karoo 3 do pretty well through here gave me confidence it'd do well pretty much anywhere else. 
And that is as expected with multi-GNSS and multi-band. Okay, onto the electronic group set integration with the Hammerhead Karoo 3. And the answer to the question a lot of people have had is no. There is still no support for Shimano DI2 systems with this head unit. The ball for that lies entirely with Shimano. And if they could stop being dicks to people who own DI2 hardware, that'd be much appreciated. Having said that, Axis integration has been expanded a little bit today with the introduction of the new SRAM Red and the bonus buttons, which can be configured as Ant Plus. Well, they call it Ant Plus Shifting Function Set buttons here, which allows full control of your head unit from those hidden buttons, along with overshift warnings, low battery warnings on all your components and everything else people want to get. Now, back on the Shimano DI2 side of things, the KI2 unofficial support for DI2 group sets can be siloed onto Hammerhead Crew units. And I suspect in the next few days, we'll see KI2 upgraded to support the Karoo 3. So keep an eye out for that. Now, the big one, companion app data connectivity via Bluetooth to the head unit, finally. Now, from ahead say here that it allows riders to upload rides, synchronize routes and workouts, use live tracking and more, more being received messages and phone call alert notifications while away from Wi-Fi or without having a SIM card. There's also a quick navigation option here where you can drop a pin from the companion app from something like Apple Maps or Google Maps and then you send it to the head unit, the head unit will then navigate you to that point. I've got a full demo of that coming up later on in this video. Strama head claim updates to the training and workout functionality on this head unit, something I haven't tried myself just yet, but I do know that will sit very well with those who have been requesting this functionality for some time now. Now launched just a few weeks ago on the Karoo 2 and also the Karoo 3 there, and that's trainer road workout synchronization. Now something else that comes in the box with the Karoo 3 is an updated mount with a few quality of life refinements. Uh, the clip-in mount and mechanism is all one and the same, but it does have a non-falling out bolt. So the bolts, uh, we all know if you've tried to put one of these on the bike and the bolt just falls out and goes under a cupboard somewhere, you're on your hands and knees. Um, nice, I do like that. There's also an optional GoPro fin mount adapter that can be installed under here. So you can use lights, GoPros, etc but that doesn't come standard with the unit. That's an additional extra. So welcome updates there to the mount. Onto the pricing, and there is a price bump of around 100 anythings, depending on where you are in the world. So USD 475, up from 399. Euro 499, I don't have the previous Euro pricing at hand. Pounds 450, up from 359. Aussie dollars 750, up from 639. And 700 Canadian dollars. Okay, so that's a lot covered off there. Let's get out onto the road and see some of these new features in action. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is a pin drop to a location about five kilometers that way, using the old school way with the Karoo 2, and then do a pin drop from the phone using Google Maps or Apple Maps onto the Karoo 3. And we'll see how they both uh, sync up. Hopefully it's the same route. We'll see how easy it is. Okay, on the Karoo 2, the original, let's have a look at that. We go down, across, pin, drag to place a pin. Where are we heading? It's up here somewhere. Right, here we go. Black Hill. It's the mountain bike park in town. And right there is where we want to head. Okay, done. Navigate to, drop pin. That's the old school way of doing it. Let's do it on the mobile phone here with Google Maps. Okay, here's where I am. Uh, right near the gold mine. Ten, we head over to Black Hill Reserve. Drop a pin right there. We want to share that pin and we'll save that to, we'll send that to the Hammerhead app, sending to crew location sent. The pin's dropped. So effectively all it does is drop the pin there for you. I still have to tick OK. Nav 2. Got it. So it just simplifies getting the pin dropped on the map with the phone. Is it any better for the route? Well, I've got two different routes on screen. Hmm, this is interesting. Let's uh, go back on that, out, out, out. Oh, I don't have two different routes. I have the same routes, but interestingly enough, the Karoo 3, I'm pointing south on, that's south. The Karoo 2 is pointing this way. So that's an interesting difference between them. All right, uh, I'll put the front camera on. We'll go for a quick ride down the road and just watch it re-nav, but I think they should sync up, hopefully, pretty well. And once I did get rolling and a wallaby jumps out in front of me right about here on screen, the two devices were navigating me effectively one for one. 
with the underlying maps being exactly the same, and it appears to be the underlying routing algorithms for turn-by-turn -turn navigation, also fine. Okay, quickly sailing through the next few kilometres to show you these two devices are routing me in parallel, doing exactly the same turn-by-turn -turn navigation as each other, as I try not to get lost here on the Goldfields track. Okay, coming up, I decided not to get too lost on the Goldfields track and take a different turn, as what was shown on screen, and you'll see them both do a reroute, and again, making both the same choices. So starting off here in a few seconds, instead of going to the path across the road there, I will do a direct right-hand turn, and both units recognizing that I'm off path or off course, and rerouting extremely quickly right here, and bang, done. And also both coming up with exactly the same reroute. Again, just confirming the underlying routing and everything like that is one for one the same on both of these units. Okay, a few minutes later, just confirmation that I did get to the destination. Both units routed me exactly the same direction to the endpoint. Unfortunately, the GoPro did not last, but proof of where I did drop the pin right there on that roundabout, and that's exactly where I ended up. Also on this ride with the Karoo 2 and Karoo 3, it was of no surprise to see them both pop up with the climber information in free ride mode, so not following a route, at exactly the same time and providing exactly the same information there on screen. So climber is Hammerhead's version of Climb Pro. I've done a whole other video on this and comparing it to others. I do think Karoo does have one of the best in class free ride Climb Pro, so it was good to see this also on the Karoo 3 working as expected. Okay, onto my summary and observations after using this unit for a number of weeks. And look, to be honest, out on the bike, looking down at both head units, they're effectively one for one the same, both units being the Karoo 2 and the Karoo 3. With the same feature sets, the same underlying maps, the same user experience, they're very hard to distinguish between each other when you're on the bike. That new Bluetooth data connection is welcome, but it's not going to be new for anybody who's used a SIM card in the past with a Karoo 2 or has tethered Wi-Fi. So having said that, I couldn't find any real hero feature of the Karoo 3, given the underlying software and feature sets are pretty much one for one. Look, having said that, the Karoo 2 on launch was a very different unit to what we see today, and that's due to their frequent firmware update cycles. This new hardware should allow Stram Ahead to do exactly the same with the Karoo 3. There's a lot more processing power and storage capacity to work with. Now, one observation I had was that the heat map data from Sunto originally, I believe, is extremely outdated by many years locally here in Ballarat. Also, that boot time and interface isn't all that snappy. It's faster, just not as snappy as what I'd expected. And another thing is that that radar alert can't be moved over to the right-hand side, something I'd like to see here in Australia. And one last thing, it's only a small thing, but I think it's important, is there's still no subsport category set within your bike profiles. So when you're uploading a road ride, a mountain bike ride, or a gravel ride to Strava, they're not correctly categorized. The request for that is over on their forums and has been there for quite some time. So my overall take on the new Hammerhead Karoo, aka the Karoo 3, is that it is the much needed hardware update and desperately needed update to that aging operating system on the previous unit. However, I don't think this is the upgrade that people were hoping for. There were big expectations about what the battery could be in this. People wanted the smaller form factor, in addition to a lot more functionality with the UI and UX that the competitors are providing. And as a stretch goal, maybe that app store they've been talking about for some time too. Things that haven't been delivered today on release day with this unit. But having said that, the hardware in this does give them the capacity to deliver on those in the near future. Let's see what they do with those firmware upgrades. All right, and with that, we'll leave it there for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one, the key new features of this new unit. The Hammerhead Karoo 3. It's not the Karoo 3, it's just the Karoo. As always, if you've enjoyed this content and found it informative, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe to be across more videos on this channel, and we'll see you soon. So just one more thing. I did, of course, attempt to sideload Zwift on this unit with more processing power, RAM, more storage, and it ran flawlessly. The frame rates weren't that good, but the experience was there. Train and control, touch screen, and here I am ticking along racking up the XP on the Kickerbike shift connected via Dircon over the home network. Now, I haven't just made this up. Here I am, legitimately, side by side, with the screen recording on, on the Hammerhead Karoo 3 running Zwift natively. Very interesting stuff. And maybe, maybe, a sign to come of what's possible with this hardware. Pretty cool stuff.